Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, there, yeah. Everyone in this room, I was saying, the less people in the room, the more power each individual has. So it's a powerful room. Um, so this is a session on helping to define uh, open source AI. Um, and it's going to be an interactive session. Uh, so I will start by introducing myself. I'm Mayor Joyce, pronouns are she and her. And I own a company called Do Big Good that uh, designs and facilitates consultative decision-making processes. And so the Open so uh, Source Initiative, which is the standard setting body for open source and software, has hired my company to design and implement a consultative process on which open source should mean for AI. And this is part of that consultative process. And then I'm going to be um, co-facilitating with Ruth Seeley, uh, whose pronouns are she and her and is the executive vice president at the Apache Software Foundation and director of open source at SAS. And I also will make a disclaimer, which is that, as I just said, my expertise is in collaborative decision making and co-design. I'm not a content level expert on AI. So if I make a mistake and it's just a whoopsie daisy, then we'll keep going. If I make a mistake and it's like, oh, what we do after this statement is gonna be wrong, then you know, let me know. Um, yeah, uh, yes, and many topics we may not have time to resolve today. <laughs> so there will be times where you're like, oh, oh, I disagree. And it's like, that's gonna be in the parking lot um, because we have a lot to get through. So I'm actually gonna start with the land acknowledgement. I think people probably know what that is. Um, it's a way of acknowledging the historical context of where we are and the work that we're doing. So uh, we acknowledge that we gather on land that was stolen from the Muwekma people, who are the true stewards of this land. And we acknowledge the sacrifice of indigenous Africans whose stolen labor was used to work this land. And we acknowledge immigrant communities whose contributions continue to deepen and diversify the cultural fabric of the nation that occupies this land. Um, so what we're doing today specifically is um, OSI has been convening a global conversation to find the definition of open source AI now for almost two years. And you are here to help us do some very practical work on that, which is coming up with the criteria for evaluating whether a license for an AI system can be defined as an open source license, right? So what one of, so this is basically the primary use case for the open source definition of AI is that OSI has a committee that looks at licenses, open source licenses, and says, huzzah, according to our definition, this can be used as an open source license, or sorry, according to our checklist, this is not an open source, a valid open source license. And right now we're getting to the point of actually saying, okay, what is that checklist cri of criteria that the committee is gonna work on? And uh, Ruth's gonna give us more details on that. but. That's what we'll be working on today. And yeah, by the end of the workshop, we hope to begin to populate this checklist with criteria for uh, defining different types of AI systems as open. And we'll see how easy or difficult that is. <laughs> um, that is part of what we're learning today. Um, someone requested uh, that this be recorded and it's actually being video recorded. So audio is also fine because video is already happening. I see the little red light in the back of the room. So um, as I stated, this will be interactive. So after an intro, context intro from Ruth, uh, we're gonna break into small groups and each group will focus on defining how they think a particular type of AI system should be licensed as open. And different perspectives and experiences matter. If you're up for participating but feel like a novice, please stay because I know there's two conferences happening. Some people may have more experience in AI than others, and that's fine. Um, so just to start off with the interactivity, which has not occurred yet, um, raise your hand if it took you less than an hour to travel to this conference. Okay, just one. Uh, between one and 10 hours to travel to this conference. Okay. More than 10 hours to travel. Oh my goodness. Uh, just for shits and giggles, where, 
where are the uh, the people who took more than 10 hours? Where did you come from? Um, Tanya, and then I don't, your name. Cyprus. Cyprus, of course, Cyprus. And what did you say? Could you, London, London. Okay, lovely. All right, so one other, one other piece of hand raising. So part of this consultative process is to come up with a list of stakeholders um, of who is a stakeholder in OpenAI. And so we have a prototype version of that list, which I'm going to see if it covers the people in this room as a little test of this list. Uh, and this is, these categories are not mutually exclusive, so you can raise your hand more than once. So who in this room would consider themselves to be a system creator, meaning they make AI systems or components that could be studied, used, modified, or shared through an open source license, such as an ML researcher in academia or industry? Who, who considers himself a creator? Oh, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> but some hesitant, hesitant, five. okay. Um, who considers themselves to be a licensed creator, writes or edits the open source license to be applied to the system, such as an IP lawyer? Okay, one, okay. Um, regulator, writes or edits rules governing licenses and systems a uh, government policymaker, and obviously there's multiple geographies to which this could apply. If someone considers themselves to be a regulator of AI or someone who might be called upon to regulate AI. Okay. Um, there's just three more. Licensee, you seek to study, use, modify, or share an open source AI system, such as being an AI engineer or a health or education researcher. One, two, three, four, four and a half. Four and two halves, I'm gonna call it five. <laughs> um, end user, consumes a system output but does not seek to study, use, modify, or share the system. You're gonna be hearing those words a lot. Uh, such as a student using a chatbot to write a report, an artist creating an image using a generative, a generative system. End user, consuming but not seeking to study, use, modify, or share, such as using a chatbot. Okay, so this. Okay, so this is this is this is maybe some some controver controversy. Okay, okay, um, and the final final one is a subject. So affected by a system output without interacting with it intentionally, or an advocate for that group, such as a someone whose a loan application to a bank is being evaluated by an AI system owned by the bank or used by the bank, or um, a, oh yeah, or someone who is a photographer who finds that their photograph is in a training data set that they didn't produce know about. But yeah, do you consider yourself a subject of AI? So one, okay, yes. So that, that, that is, um, that was my assumption as well that everyone would consider, but I didn't want to push that on people. Yes. So the next question is, are there any other connections to AI in this room that are not covered by those categories? And please, please uh, describe it. Yes. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Mm, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. So what, okay, so OS, OS, what would you say is your, your connection is to AI? Okay, okay, advocates, okay, within OS, within open source. Okay. What? Investors. Investors. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. All right. So now um, Ruth will give some more details on the project and then we'll break up into small groups and do some um, work on the definition. Thank you. Yeah, I'm actually going to Am I on now? Yeah. 
I'm actually going to give late details. I have the whole slide deck, uh, but I know or am familiar with just about everybody in this room, and I'm pretty sure you could all work through this slide deck too. So <laughs> I don't think we need to go deeply into detail. I did promise Stefano we would ask uh, how many folks are familiar, pretty familiar with the OSI and the open source definition and the four software freedoms. And how many of you are like, do not cite the deep magic to me. I was there when it was written. <laughs> yes, several of you. <laughs> so uh, as most of you are familiar with the OSI and, uh, and, and most of you are familiar with me and know that I am not the OSI, but I am a friend of community and, and offered to do this. Uh, we had done one at All Things Open in Raleigh and, and I worked on that project. So here I am with you. So OSI is this 25 year old nonprofit organization that currently maintains and defends the open source definition among many other things uh, that are represented here. And if you have questions about any of those, I'm happy to chat with you about them later. But I think that this is a really good group to work on this, uh, the actual hands-on workshop -y part. And so I would like to get to that. And I'm pretty sure most of you know what all these things are anyway. That deep dive AI is, is what has led to all of this. So uh, everyone, we all know that technology evolves and this is where we are now. Uh, and in fact, I think most of you either were on the panel about an hour ago about open source AI or were in that room. That was an excellent intro to what we're gonna work on here. Uh, so I've heard Stefano say uh, a few times, we had 20 years to work on the open source definition. We don't have 20 years this time, it's, it's now. And so there is this sense of urgency in multiple ways with all of the policy and regulation work that's happening around the world right now. Uh, and if there's no real understanding, if people are throwing around this term open source AI without a common understanding of what that means, we're going to end up with different interpretations. We're gonna end up in a, a very bad place. There's already a lot of confusion in the market around uh, components, models, pieces that are being released already, produced using references to open or open source, using licenses that may not even apply to what they are. It's kind of a hot mess and it's time to, to all agree on what exactly we're doing here. And we're already seeing th some of the juggernauts do some gatekeeping and uh, that is not where we wanna be. Everything is moving very fast. And so that's why we're doing this now. And I, I think I heard earlier officially the plan is to uh, announce the open source AI definition in October of 2024. Fingers crossed. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> Did you have follow up thoughts? I mean, we're, we're trying to move fast. That's the goal. Move fast. We are trying to September. <laughs> you just moved up the date. Move, the audience has moved up the deadline. <laughs> Do I hear June? Yeah. June? Uh, so I'm sure you are all familiar with this typical machine learning pipeline. And like I said, I just really want to blitz through this so that, that you guys have a lot of time to work. Uh, we all know here that the legal landscape is pretty complicated right now. So does uh, a data set have copyright? And what does that mean in different countries? Some countries have even more than that. Privacy laws, database rights in the EU. Database rights last for 15 years until somebody makes a change and a new set of rights are created for that database. It's, uh, it's super complicated right now. Love this slide. So uh, what is the copyright on this image? We asked for an, a picture of an anthropomorphic mouse. Does everyone in this room have the same opinion on the copyright of this image as a certain entity that may be known for its litigious nature? Before December 31st. Ah, yes. And, and things, thank you for further evidence that things are changing quickly and we must move fast. And the, the issues are complicated. It is not simply, let's just make a new open source AI definition. There is a lot to think about around the data, the amount of data that is required, the issues around finding it and curating it and the bias that may be there in the conditions for using that data. There are the models themselves, uh, what's in there, what legal frameworks apply to those, the knowledge to set up clusters, test and fix those models, the hardware that relies largely on a proprietary ecosystem, which is not always our preference, uh, and how these systems are, are currently being deployed with a lot of big promises that aren't necessarily being, being met, maybe with some disappointing results in some cases. So uh, there is also an aspect of community. Uh, so Roman talked about the Apache concept of community over code, and the AI community doesn't have those same social norm concepts in place yet. So there's no unanimous consensus on what acceptable behavior is around maybe scraping the web for images, around publishing papers, around models. Uh, and there's a lot of harm that could potentially come out of that. And so that's how we got to this discussion about defining open source AI. So this conversation has been going on since June, I think, started with some 
much looser, less concrete conversations around what this might look like and has evolved through these workshops like what you're about to do, although you're going to try a, a slightly different version that I'm very excited to see how it goes. And it has that objective of a shared understanding. So we're talking to not just open source experts like all of you, but experts in multiple fields and multiple field disciplines around the world, not just the same voices that are going to say the same things. Uh, we can't just produce this sacred new text and present it to the world. That's not how we do things. So in the way that open source is done collaboratively, we're doing this definition collaboratively. Uh, I, this is normally where Stefano would retrace the history of open source for you, but again, you were all there when the texts were written. So <laughs> let's just blitz right through that. Uh, I do want to, to bring up the topic of self-sovereignty and that that's the reason that field of use restrictions are not generally what we do in open source. That is important to keep in mind when we're talking about these definition ideas. Uh, yeah, so if we think about that golden rule of the GNU manifesto and replace the word program with an AI system, that is kind of the fundamental idea of the current state of the definition. So, um, oh, as a side note, what is an AI system? If I asked you all to write down a definition, are we all going to come out with the same definition of what an AI system is? Probably not. In fact, absolutely not. There are uh, as many definitions as there are people in this room, but the generally agreed upon one from the OECD that is cited here and updated, I think just like a month ago or less, uh, is the one that we're going with. We also would like to keep in mind that uh, as an open source community, we have a certain set of benefits in mind for open source and what that means. We are noticing that policymakers around the world maybe have some different priorities in mind, some overlapping ones, but also some different ones. And we have to recognize that and deal with those things, or this concept of open source AI will not have a successful adoption. So uh, making sure that it can be transparent, explainable, that the definition has all of these attributes and that we're considering those needs that are, are not the way that we all sort of natively approach the world. I know it's very easy to have spent years and decades even for a lot of you in this open source world and come with a certain mindset and forget that there are a lot of people in this world who just woke up in the last 12 to 18 months and were like, I'm sorry, where does the software come from? And, and that's the people that are going to be making these kinds of decisions. So how are we going to do this? We're going to go back to those four basic freedoms uh, that are the, the four software freedoms and start from there. So study, use, modify, share. This is the current state of the definition that when you start working that you're going to work from. And I promise I, I will put it back. Uh, and I think, do we even have little handouts that people can look at? Yeah, it's further broken out. Separate taxes. Yeah, yeah. And, and so this is where you'll be starting from. To be open source, an AI system needs to make its components available under licenses that individually grant the users of the system these freedoms, study, use, modify, and share that you are all intimately familiar with. Uh, but today, we're actually going to break down into the components of that system. And so we're going to look at each of those aspects within the context of the code, the model, and the data. And so actually, if you want to hold up the little sheet, we're going to, there, we will over explain this repeatedly and help you through it. And there'll be handouts, but you're each going to get, uh, each group, not each individual, each group is going to get one of these sheets so that you can discuss each of those aspects in those contexts. Now, if your group spends all the time in one of these boxes, that's totally okay. If you don't fill in every square on the sheet, we don't have that kind of time. I'm almost certain you will not fill in every square on this sheet. Whatever your group has the interest and expertise to discuss, that's what we want to hear. So this is, uh, this is a replication of that, and you will see this uh, during your time to work. I will put this slide back up that breaks down how the definition fits into each of those categories, and you will have it on these little handouts. So the chunk of this that we're looking at is that, that four freedoms. Uh, Mary mentioned that we're working on a license checklist and what that will look like for this. And if you go to opensource.org slash deep dive slash drafts, you can see all of this and the context around it. You can also see the current draft and add comments. You can see other people's comments. You can have a whole conversation. You can send it to your friends who aren't here and invite them to join that conversation there. But that chunk of the four freedoms is what we're looking at today. So let's make it happen.
Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is break up into groups, and you are going to spend a few minutes introducing yourselves to each other, if you don't already know each other, give a little context about where you're coming from to this conversation, uh, what you're bringing to it, and how you interact with AI. And then the bulk of the time is going to be the brainstorming and filling in those sheets. You should appoint someone to come back at the end and present what you have found. And that is how the day is going to go.